And the first time you start a little nav map, it will start creating the databases. And the reason for that is it needs to import the sceneries which are added to Flight Simulator depending on the uh, add-ons you installed. So first you will get a message here. So it will give you an overview of okay, how you can use a little nav map. But in, all, in this case, that's what we're gonna discuss in this tutorial. And the second prompt, and let me zoom in a bit, uh, will give you the option to specify a location where the add-ons are installed. So in this case, uh, it automatically picked up the location where Flight Simulator is installed and I can load the sceneries by using the load button. Uh, since this will take some time, uh, I will pause the video or the recording, I should say, and we'll return back uh, once the import has finished. So after a little bit of waiting, like two minutes, it imported over 3,000 files, which over almost uh, 37,000 airports, some VOR, ILS and NDB beacons, Marcus waypoints and airspaces. So once you've done that, you can click OK and we'll bring you to the next prompt. The next prompt allows you to connect little nav map to Flight Simulator 2020. So you can do it by simply pressing connect. And then once Flight Simulator is installed, it will connect you to Flight Simulator or it will connect little nav map to Flight Simulator. So it will show the actual position where your airplane is located. So let me zoom out for now and increase the size of the window. So the two is built up of a few sections. So on the left side, you've got the flight plan, which contains the altitude and the type of flight you want to, uh, want to fly. And in the bottom part, you will find the information. Since we didn't select anything yet, you won't see a lot here for now. So on the right side, you've got the option to search and it allows you to search on airports, uh, nav aids, so NDB, VOR, waypoints, uh, procedures, and then you've got the user points and the user points are simply waypoints which you define by yourself. So for example, if I want to fly from uh, Rotterdam airport, type in the uh, ICAO code, it will show me the airport. And when I right click on it, I can go down and select the option set as flight plan departure. That will add this airport to the uh, flight plan. As you can see, there are also various other options. You can, for example, specify a minimum and maximum uh, length of the uh, runways and also the surface, right? So is it hard, soft, uh, water, etc. So we'll leave it for now. And then we'll go to the left side. And as you can see on the left side, it has added uh, Rotterdam. It has added runway 06 to be specific. So if we would double click on it, it will bring us to uh, the airport. And you can see when we zoom in, you can see all the details, right? So you can see the uh, parking spots, the review depots, uh, the location, so the runway we're taking off. Uh, also here, the length, the type of runway. And when we're selecting the runway, and, or airport, I should say, and go down, then we can see the overview of the airport, right? So we can see the elevation, uh, when the sunrise and sunset are, the coordinates, uh, the weather, the facilities, runway information, com frequencies, and where it gets the data from. So in this case, it's got it from two different files, which are part of Flight Simulator. If you would select runway, which is the next tab, then you will get an overview of the runways. So the, the headings, the uh, offset threshold, uh, effective landing distance, the pattern, right? If you fly VFR, is it left or right pattern? Uh, and several other pieces like, okay, does it have lights? Does it have DME, uh, glide scope, all that kind of information. When we select comment, we'll show you the communication information. So all the frequencies for approach control, ATIS, clearance, air traffic control. So a lot of information can be found here. And the last but not least, the procedures. So in this case, okay, hey, if we want to approach using ILS via 
uh, Echo Hotel 250 to runway 06. This is a frequency, uh, the localizer heading, and a glide scope uh, pitch. So now we located, or now we set our starting point. The next thing, of course, is we need to specify to which location are we flying to. Well, in this case, uh, let's make a flight to uh, somewhere around the world, maybe somewhere in the Netherlands. And you can do either two things. Either you can add the waypoints by uh, right-clicking on them and then say add to flight plan. So let me do that. Um, then we need to go here. Oh, let me first need to click it. Uh, so when you click add to waypoints, depending on the waypoint you selected, it contains several options. It says either, okay, hey, do you want to add the NDB? In this case, Skippo Amsterdam and V. Do you want to add a waypoint uh, Echo Hotel 669 or waypoint uh, November Victor, or do you want to add the position? In this case, I want to add the NDB, and you can see it has added the waypoint here, and when you select it, it will uh, mark it here so that you're aware which waypoint it is. The other option you can do, and then we need to go back to the uh, airport itself, is when you right click on the airport, you Sometimes, let's say right click on the airport, right click on the uh, runway, you have the uh, departure procedures. So you can click on it, and then I need to zoom out because the list is pretty long. Oh, let me zoom it, let me go to the right. And here you can see that it has now moved to the departures and then shows you the different procedures. So since we're, let's say, departing from runway 06. Then we can concentrate on the SIDs 06. So when we expand it, you can select an approach, or in this case, uh, say a departure procedure, and we'll show it live on the map how the uh, departure is. Right. So this one um, does make sense. Well, it makes sense if you want to go to the UK. So let me select the next one. Not change a lot. So then this one, you can see it makes a turn and then goes to the sea. Probably this one is almost the same. Yep. And then we've got this one, which looks like to be a little bit nicer. We want to stay in the Netherlands. So we're going to right click on it and we're going to say insert. Uh, no, we're not gonna insert the, insert this one specifically. We want to yeah. Oh, what was it? Sorry, my bad. I thought it was like this. So let me zoom on it. Yeah. So some of the things require some puzzling. And it has added multiple waypoints now to our flight map, right? So if we would click on them, it will show you where they actually are. Uh, in this case, uh, it still has the one in uh, skip hole. So if you want to get rid of it, then you can click on it, right click on it again, and then you can have the option to delete it, uh, either manually or by using the delete key. So press the delete key on my keyboard. So it's now bring us to Linux. And let's fly to, where shall we go to? Maybe there's an airport in Germany. I think here's Dalen Airport. We can also use that one. Yeah, but that's, uh, as you can see when, we, when we're selecting it. So let's get some information about it. So we're gonna zoom out. And you can see on the uh, left, Side, it will show you the information. So it's a Tarkan, uh, Dale, uh, the elevation, uh, the VOR, the region it belongs to. But that's not the airport which we will probably want to select. So we're gonna zoom out a bit. And then we're gonna select, for example, This one, it's a uh, or airport Teugen. So we're gonna right click on it and then we're gonna say uh, set airport Teugen 
as destination, which will uh, put the new line here and we'll make sure that we're, um, let's say, adding the airport as destination. But one of the things you see is that it directly points you to the airport itself. In some cases, you might want to uh, use an arrival procedure if you want to uh, fly, fly via the official routes. So you can uh, right click on the airport, say show arrival procedures. Then on the top of the on the top right, you can see the approaches. In this case, it only has one approach. So when we're selecting it, you can see the approach. And then we're gonna right click on it and say, okay, instead in the way or in the air flight plan. So it has now added all the stuff to our flight plan. Um, maybe it's some of the corners are a little, I would say, when we zoom in here. It's a little bit, I would say, a sharp corner, but let's leave it for now. Um, so everything is in place, what we what we should add to the uh, to the waypoint or to the airplane, I should say, or the flight plan. Um, what you can do is, based on this, you can either uh, save the flight plan as a Flight Simulator 2020 file, and then once you start up Flight Simulator, you can load the file. But there are also, also some other options, and one of those options is to uh, show the fuel report. Uh, by default, no airplane is selected. But that's the nice thing about the uh, developer. They they already provided a list of uh, initial downloads. So if you go to uh, this URL, I will paste in the in the text. Then you can download uh, the aircraft performance files. So I already downloaded the, the Cessna uh, Skyhawk G1000. So let me load it up in a little nav map. So when you select the view report uh, section, and you can do that either by selecting uh, or by pressing F8 or by selecting flight plan and view report. And then we're gonna use the import option here. And we're gonna uh, select it. And then it has uh, pre-populated all the stuff. So in this case, the uh, length of the flight is uh, 86 uh, miles, 42 minutes. Average speed around uh, 122 knots. Uh, the average wind. And here's the interesting information about, okay, what's the fuel usage? Uh, so how much fuel do we need? to travel from uh, Rotterdam to uh, Teugen Airport. Always nice when you want to, I would say, pre-populate the fuel plan in Flight Simulator itself. So, nice tool, little nav map, has a lot of options. We only discussed, I would say, a portion of it because there are far more options. Uh, let, me, let me show you some other ones. So, for example, when you want to add a holding pattern, you can right click on the airport and say, add holding here. So let me do that. It will prompt you and say, okay, hey, specify the altitude which you want to fly, uh, the uh, speed, the course, and the uh, time in minutes, right, to complete the lap. Uh, so in this case, it will take us four minutes to complete the lap. And when we would select okay, it has added a holding pattern here, which you can use in case you're, I would say it's a little bit dense at the airport and you need to go to a holding pattern. Uh, what are other options? So let's go back to uh, Rotterdam Airport for that specific view. The other option is to add a traffic pattern and that's mostly used for VFR. So you can right click it and then you can select the runway, uh, downwind to runway, one uh, mile, pattern altitude, a thousand feet, and then I press OK. And then it shows you the uh, pattern which you can fly when leaving the airport. So either straight out or to the left, but also when entering the airport. So you can flying from here and then you take the left turn, left turn, and then uh, make your 
approach or landing on runway 06. So you can see crazy amount of options. Uh, if you hover over stuff like beacons or airports, it also shows you a lot of information. So I would say it's a perfect tool to schedule your flight plans. Here ends this tutorial. I hope you liked it. Uh, if you've got questions or comments, then uh, provide them below the box in the comment boxes. Uh, if you like this video, then consider to use the like button. Uh, if you want to see more of these videos or maybe you're more interested in the flying videos or aircraft instruction videos, then consider to subscribe to my channel. Uh, thanks for watching and see you next time.